Testing, testing. Hi, this is Jan Stoneman, and if you've been wondering how to get your Amazon Management Console set up for login with Google, this is the video for you. So there's a great blog post here on the AWS security blog about how to do this. And uh, just a quick note, the reason you might wanna do this is it's a security best practice to manage all your identities in one system. You don't wanna have your users managed in AWS IAM and in uh, Google SSO if, you've, if you're using both. Better to consolidate it to one place. And uh, you can get an overview of how that works here but I'm just gonna take you through the steps. So first you enable SSO by going to AWS SSO, and it looks like I've already enabled it, but I've got it configured in the Ohio region. So I'll go over to the Ohio region here, and for some reason, it just signed me out of the account. I'll sign right back in and go over to Ohio. And next step is I'm gonna go to settings, change the identity source, to external identity provider, since Google is external. And the next step is to expand the metadata values here. And then to head over to admin.google.com, log into the organization you wanna configure this for. And then to create an app, so in this case a SAML app, and we're gonna hit add app. If you don't see the option to add a custom SAML app um, on this page or the previous page, uh, you probably don't have enough permissions. You might only see the private Android app or a private Android web app. In that case, you need to ask your Google Suite, your Google Workspace, or your G Suite administrator to give you more permissions. The super user will probably get you there if you can snag that level of permissions. So we're gonna give this the recommended name here that's very obvious, which is AWS SSO, so that people managing the SSO here, managing the apps in G Suite recognize what this is. And we're gonna download the metadata here. Going back to the blog here, we're gonna enter the service provider details on the next page. So we're gonna enter the ACS URL from here copy that into there. The entity URL. So we've got the ACS, the entity, and the start URL on G Suite. On AWS SSO, we've got the sign-in URL, so that's, that's clear, I'll put that here. And we've got the issuer URL. So I'm gonna just guess that that's what the entity ID is. I'll put that there. And then in the blog, we've got name ID format, choose email. And keep the default here. And hit continue. And then the attributes. We're gonna leave the default settings on the attribute mapping screen and hit finish. On the application page in the user access section, select the down arrow, the down arrow, and we're gonna turn this on for everybody. And then we're gonna add the identity provider metadata that we downloaded in G Suite to AWS SSO. So, hit browse and select the thing you just downloaded in G Suite, Google IDP metadata XML. And beware, the first time I tried this, I hit download metadata file from AWS SSO and then I tried to download that very same XML file here and I got an error and I got an error. So you wanna be sure to upload the correct XML file here. And we can just accept all of that and that worked. So now we've set up an external identity provider, in this case G Suite, as our identity source. Now, the next step is to manage users and permissions. And sadly, 
Although AWS SSO supports automatic user provisioning for some types of external identity providers, uh, maybe for Active Directory, I believe, but not for G Suite yet. So we ha actually have to manually add the users to AWS SSO, but once they've been manually added, then they can be used to sign in to the AWS Management Console with the G Suite login. So we're gonna go to AWS SSO, to users, add user. Now we have to make sure that the username matches up with the full email address in your G Suite account. Make sure that this is not the email address you're matching, although that can match as well, but it really has to be the username that's matching. So the username is gonna be an email as you're integrating this. So head over to your Google admin directory and users. There you can see a list of all your users. This is gonna be fine if you don't have a very large organization. You can just um, enter them one at a time. And you know maybe you only have a few people that actually need to access the AWS Management Console who are among these Google users. So if that works for you, you can do it manually. Otherwise, apparently there are some scripts out there um, and you can write your own using the Google SDK for uh, user administration. But uh, since in this case, I only have a few users to add, I'm just gonna do this manually. So just gonna add, add you know, yan.stoneman at mydomain.com. I'll use the same as the email address, enter my name. I'll leave all the other details blank. I'll skip adding the user to groups. Ah, okay, so I got that error that I already had a user in AWS SSO. I just wasn't using Google yet to sign in with that user. And if I check, yep, sure enough, that username is already correctly configured. It's the same email address as in the Google Identity Provider, so I don't need to do any extra work there. And if I go to the settings for AWS SSO, I can click on the user portal URL, which will take me to the AWS SSO sign-in page, and it automatically took me to accounts.google.com for the login. And then I can try to sign in with that. And voila, I was taken to the single sign-on page and I can choose one of the accounts and sign into the management console or get my CLI credentials. So that worked. So I just wanna make you aware of one gotcha here. If you don't make your username in AWS SSO match up with the username in your Google identity provider and then you try to log in with Google, it will redirect you to Google, but you're gonna get a weird MFA error like this one here, invalid MFA credentials. And I was a little confused when I saw that error, but then when I looked on Stack Overflow, I saw the note that you have to make sure that the manually created user accounts match the email address of the G Suite user, which it did say in the documentation, but I just missed that. And that's what caused that MFA error. So I hope this video helped you. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment below if you have a question about uh, something you'd like to know more about for a future video, something you want me to walk through in a demo. Thanks for watching.